your NFL Sundays are about to get a whole lot more magical. When you bundle NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV, you get the most live NFL games all in one place. And with MultiView, you can watch up to four games at once, so you can catch all the action right from the comfort of home. Watch every game every Sunday on NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Sign up now at youtube.com slash Sunday Ticket. Device and content restrictions apply. Local and national games on YouTube TV. NFL Sunday Ticket for out-of-market games excludes digital-only games. When it comes to towing, seeing is believing. That's why Chevy Truck's advanced camera technology offers up to eight available cameras for 14 unique views, so you can focus on the view that really matters. Chevrolet, together let's drive. Learn more about Chevy Trucks at Chevy.com. Safety or driver assistance features are no substitute for the driver's responsibility to operate the vehicle in a safe manner. Read the vehicle owner's manual for important feature limitations and information. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. So it's not quite the Champs Elysees, but we are here in Paris and we have just had the most amazing two and a half weeks, three weeks of being on the radio. A hundred years since radio first broadcast the Olympics, we did the Olympics for TalkSport. And we're sat here watching the closing ceremony and it's always a big night. It's always quite an emotional night and we've watched the athletes come in and I think first and foremost it's their night, isn't it? You know, they come in in this haphazard fashion and I think for us and anything but footy, how wonderful to have Alex Yee and Bryony Page there because those are two athletes that you and I have championed, not just since we began this podcast in 2019 and not just since we've been on the radio over the last 16 days, but two athletes that we've championed since they first came onto the scene. I know I've commentated at a lot of uh, triathlon events in York and uh, Yorkshire, in Leeds, of course, in World Series events. I first met Bryony at the NEC in Birmingham at Kitting Out ahead of Rio 2016 when she was so unsure and insecure of herself. And here they are tonight. And I was there for Alex's gold. You were there for yeah. Bryony's gold. Here they are tonight carrying that union flag in. And I laughed with Bryony. I mean, what we were first week, I think maybe maybe end of the first week. Yeah. And I said to her, you're going to carry the flag. There is, a, there is a flag available because you've won bronze, you've won silver, and now you've won gold, three Olympics. We knew she was going to finish. She's off to do the Cirque du Soleil. And, you know, she hasn't ruled out LA, but she's going to do Cirque du Soleil first. But I said to her, it will be you. And she was like, no, it won't be, it won't be. But actually how it panned out, Team GB didn't really go and win any more big medals after that, did they? Yeah, and that's not disrespectful to Alex and Bryony. No. We, we've said all along that we didn't think the gold medal count here would be as significant as it has been. And I think the other thing we said all along was that those big names, the names that transcend Olympic sport and go into the public consciousness. So from this Olympic team, I'm thinking Helen Glover, Tom Daly, Adam Peaty, Katerina Johnson-Thompson. Max Whitlock, Andy Ma Murray. Max Whit they haven't won the gold medals. Now, that's not to belittle anything they've achieved here and in their careers, but they are the class of 2012 who are now stepping away from this stage predominantly. They've done fantastically well to be at whatever it is, third, fourth, fifth games, whatever for them all, and they've done brilliantly. But this is about a moment tonight as we talk at this closing ceremony about recognising the team of 2024 and Brian E, who came onto that team in Rio, won silver, surprised a lot of people, maintained it to win the bronze in a really difficult environment in Tokyo. And then she won world championships in the last two or three years. Two-time world champion. I was with Tim Peake, uh, not the astronaut, her media guy, um, the British gym gymnastics media guy, who is clearly highly respected with the gymnast because he's the only media guy I've ever heard name checked by a gold medal winning athlete when they do their thank yous. You know what it's like, my coach, my family. The national lottery. National lottery, my media guy, Tim. So, you know, it's, I was with him earlier when, when Bryony was being told that she had the honor tonight. Two time world champion, the bronze, silver and gold at the Olympics. And above all, a very good person 
in terms of what she offers beyond the sport of trampolining. She is the kind of athlete, as is Alex Yee, that will go and do the school visits, will go and meet the you know, local athletics club teams. She will go to the junior trampolining meets. And that is all I think you can ask of these guys. When they come here, they perform on this big stage, that they go home and they try and do within reason and with performance in mind as much as they can of that kind of work. So we're going to talk about your highlights and my highlights of Paris 2024 in a moment. But let's talk about numbers because we finished Team GB with 65 medals, same as London 2012, more than Tokyo, but only 14 golds, which means we finished seventh in the medal table, which is our lowest position since Athens 20 years ago. And look, there is a lot of shouting about winning more medals than Tokyo in it. Congratulations to everyone who met, won a medal. As you've said, it's so hard to win an Olympic medal. I'm not sitting here saying it's easy, but we haven't won enough gold medals in terms of, we, of finishing in the top five. Mark England told us on this podcast, we will finish top five and be the top European nation. And actually, we're not even the second best European nation. France have, 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 have been absolutely huge from day one. I think when Dupont won that rugby sevens and it kicked on from there and, and it hasn't stopped. And then the Netherlands as well, rowing, cycling, athletics. Sifan Hassan in the marathon today, in the last day. I, I wonder whether Team GB have slightly underestimated the home support for the French. Yes, and I think we might be in a bit of a transitional phase as well because of those names that we mentioned earlier. And I, I would liken it maybe to where GB Rowing was three years ago, where they were in a bit of a transitional phase, bringing a lot of new blood through. I don't want to be overly negative about the medal hall. I want to be a grumpy old man. Because I, I remember when medal halls were nowhere near what, what we've got at the minute. And we have spoken so much on this podcast about 1984 and we've spoken so much 96 on 96 obviously was, was the, the real low moment but you know in in, in 84 Seb Coe, Tessa Sanderson, Daly Thompson three track and field gold medalists we got them together on the radio for talk sport this week but by 1996 before national lottery funding just the one gold medal Redgrave and Pinson um, again great to have Steve Redgrave part of the talk sport team and, and we've seen Matt Pinson bubbling around here as well working over the past couple of weeks too um, so I don't want to be overly negative because I still think 60 plus medals is a fantastic haul because it was third overall in the medals one so if you were just looking at medals one which the Americans do we'd have been third yeah and that's what Team GB and UK Sport will say I had a little chat with Catherine Granger at the Taekwondo the other day um, and that was obviously the, the bonus the, the positive the line is that you know, we've won a lot of medals across a lot of sports. So you think of Kate and Izzy, Izzy Thorpe, Kate Shortman in artistic swimming, never won a medal in that sport before. They've got a medal here. Uh, you think you were at the sport climbing. I mean, what a commentary on sport climbing and a gold medal commentary as well. You know, there's been another BMX, another mountain bike medal here. There's been lots of medals across lots of different sports. And I think perhaps for UK sport and their outlook at the minute, that is more important than that just tally of gold medals. But when we come to LA in four years time. <laughs> you think we're gonna be there? Yeah, two, well. two old men, Waldorf and Statler, <laughs> sat on the Hollywood sign, moaning about it all. We won't be moaning. I've refused, I've moaned to you a couple of times, but I refuse to be one of these people who just moans. Every single person has said to me, it's amazing you're at the Olympics, and it is. And we were in venue, and as I've said earlier, to do it on the radio was, was incredible. And we'll talk about highlights in a moment. But look, LA, where are the gold medals coming from? And I know it's four years away, so the boxing will go away and find new stars. Sailing will go away and find new stars. They did win medals, but they haven't had very good games. No, those are two sports, I think, that will be where rowing was a few years ago. Sailing, I mean, Ellie Aldridge, great gold medal in a new event. They cool needed event. it, last event. Yeah, they needed that gold medal. I think it was a gold and they, they won another medal earlier on in the games. Judo was disappointing. Um, there wasn't, I've, I've been saying for a long time, I, I, I fancied judo would be all right. And I thought the battle between France and, and Great Britain in judo would be good. Even in things like triathlon, again, a sport that I've highlighted and highlighted, France actually didn't get on the podium in the mixed team relay because of issues that we, we saw. But 
But Great Britain didn't get the gold that they got last time, did they? They were, and you were, you were at that event. Where are the stars? I don't know if we we necessarily know them yet. Um, I think I think there may be two or three that emerge. I would imagine that Emma Finnegan, who's been the first uh, British female athlete to win three medals at one game since Mary Rand in 1964, first first cyclist to do that. You know, I would think she's still a very young lady. I, I would expect her to be back. Triathlon is tough to come back and do that, but I can't see anyone at the minute beyond Alex Yee that, that, that would, would come back and, and do that. Track and field, Keely Hodgkinson. Well, just on track and field, because it's one of our biggest sports, and World Athletics say it is the biggest Olympic sport. We've done all right. Actually, I think British Athletics have done pretty well. And you take Josh Kerr's race, Matthew Hudson's Smith's race, we could have had three gold medals. Yeah, there's been a couple of really close silvers there. Um, as you say, with, with Josh, that one, I think, hurt a, a few people. Matt Hudson-Smith, I think that hurt a few people. Then there was Daryl Nita with a fourth in the in the 100 metres. Um, Din Rasher-Smith, obviously, in the other sprint, got really close. On a slightly different traverse, um, there might have been a few more athletics medals. Keeley's come away with the only gold. There wasn't a gold track and field medal in Tokyo for nope. for British athletics, was it? So they've upgraded. I think Keely will be back. She's got a huge challenge now because she's going to go back and she's going to be a superstar. She needs to not do an Emma Raducanu, doesn't she? Yeah, and that is the thing. She needs to go back and Jenny Meadows and Trevor Painter, her coaching team, need to get a hold of her and go, OK, enjoy this till Christmas or whatever go and earn your money ultimately she could set herself up for life and that may be more important than what what happens in Los Angeles she needs to go away and and celebrate the moment if I've learned one thing at these games it's to stop asking athletes about Los Angeles in four years because no one wants to talk about it they just want to be in in this moment whether that's a good or a bad moment they want to be in this moment well they've worked so hard yeah. and and it, yes it's a shorter cycle so effectively two and a half years but they are focused on one day and delivering one day. And I think I remember interviewing Helen Glover after the women's four just missed out to the Netherlands in that in that gold silver battle. And she was like, I'm so gutted because she was pleased with her crew because it was their first medal. She wanted gold. And you just think that one race, I said you were unbeaten all year. And the one race you didn't need to be unbeaten was the one race that you were beaten. But, of course, that's the Olympic final, isn't it? I bet she was delighted to hear that from you. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm presuming she's deleted you off her contacts list in the, in the past week and a half. We won't be, just to let you know, we won't be getting Helen Glover back on the podcast at any uh, friend of, former friend of but, the podcast. But ultimately, you've spent your entire year, two years, three years, building up to one day, yeah. one race. Now, Imogen Grant and Emily Craig knew exactly what they needed to do, and they won that race. That was the race they needed to win. The celebrations are continuing behind us. The French are in, but but that that is the difficulty, isn't it? And I think that's what I would say about the fact that Great Britain haven't won these golds is we haven't quite just got over the line when we really needed to. Yeah, and I think you know maybe it's because I was there for Emily and Imogen, the one day of rowing you missed, <laughs> uh, and I went and uh, and I saw the men's eight. <laughs> can I point out and the women's quads? You know, no, I think you're absolutely right. I just think that where Great Britain are on the world stage at the minute, they're still supremely competitive. They're still very much a top, top global Olympic nation. But the French have invested really heavily in these games, as you would expect. They've known they were hosting them, obviously, for quite some time. Japan as well finished high up the table, didn't they, after and Tokyo? Japan have had the knock-on, as Great Britain did after hosting and Japan have probably benefited, I think, from the fact that post-COVID, that investment is still filtering down the system. Netherlands have done amazingly well. I mean, and you walk around Paris, and we've walked around Paris and been at venues. The, the orange that we've seen has been fantastic. I mean, they're all lovely, so I don't begrudge them. Um, I've had to work today with, you know, Dutch um, TV crews, and we've had to share a position for our interviews. And actually, you know, you can't begrudge them that, that success because, you know, they are absolutely delighted. They're really happy. And But I go back to my original question. Did we did we underplay the Dutch and the French? Did we, yeah. we did we 
not really consider that they would win as many medals as they have? The Dutch, I would say we, we probably didn't put them up as far as they have done. They, like us, have probably considered this a home game, by all accounts. Yeah. I think we all said the French would be good and we perhaps took our eye off the ball a little bit because we know their track and field team was, have, weak. was weak and they, they didn't win a gold medal here in track and field, which personally I, I would have loved to have seen at the Stade de France as the person that was there every night. They won that silver medal in the hurdles um, and I thought that was an amazing moment. What we had in London, of course, was our Super Saturday and that really just elevated the event. I think had the London Olympics ended with Brits... British athletes just winning maybe a silver in track and field. We might not look back on it in quite the same glow. But the French had Dupont with yeah. the rugby sevens. Then they had Lyon Marchand in Judo, the first week. Taekwondo. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've done it across a number of sports in, in terrific venues. and Also team sports. They've done very well in yeah. team sports. I mean, they lost the foot, men's football, which was a bit of a shocker. Basketball. But, but yeah. As well. I mean, and, and we look at it through a very British lens, don't we? So uh, I'm sat here saying, oh, I wish they'd won a track and field medal. Actually, on their sports personality of the year, it will be judokas and it will be basketball players, which it would be on ours. In fact, didn't they win the mountain bike women and then the next day Pidcock raced against another Frenchman and just beat him? Yeah, it was. It was a gold medal for, for um, France in the women's race. And an amazing atmosphere, by the way, out there at... Uh, at that venue, Ellen Cor, as it was. And then the same afternoon, I was at the Canoe Slalom and Adam Burgess was going against the Frenchman who actually won, he won the gold and Adam Burgess won silver, so it kind of worked itself out. But, I mean, the Canoe Slalom was an incredible venue and the noise, and we always knew that a huge grandstand, I think the British crew had said to me, the British rowers, a, a British canoeist had said to me, I'm a bit daunted by it, in fact, because they were vast. I spoke to Georgia Bell and she said to me that Head of her 1500 metres final, and we are going to get onto our highlights of the games. I'll come back to Georgia Bell. But she said to me, head of that 1500 metres final, she said, I heard the roars and the cheers for the French athletes tonight, and I just had to pretend they were for me. Uh, well, they, it worked. It, it did. She was one of the stars. So, look, this is anything but footy. We're in Paris. We're wrapping up the Olympics. We're going to do a proper sit down. I'm in tears. <laughs> We're going to do a proper sit down and review everything but we thought we'd just give you a kind of 20 minute yeah. wow this has been an amazing experience while we're sat watching this closing ceremony we're literally here watching the closing ceremony surrounded by parisians so. so i've got three highlights you've got three highlights you start off your first number one highlight i've got three highlights i've yeah. got 33 no highlights. you've got three I, I narrowed it down from 457 overnight okay I, I've got broadcasting highlights from the work that you we've been to, doing. You need to choose, yeah, that's fine. And I've got highlights from what happened in the Olympic Games. Georgia Bell. That bron I, I've always said, um, and regular listeners, I've bored you with, bronzes are my favourite medal sometimes. Uh, Beth Tweddle, Tom Daly, bronzes in 2012, my favourite. Georgia Bell, I first met her at the start of this year. I chatted to her quite a lot during the World Indoors in Glasgow. I think she finished fourth. We had a conversation about whether she would go back to her work. You took she took a photo for her, didn't you, as well? Yeah, yeah, I did. And she was there with her, her dad, who actually works on Channel 5 News, and some of his colleagues, and he, he obviously is out here as well. Um, and I, I spoke to her there, and she's like, I've got a big decision to make. Do I go back to work, get some time off? Do I go for this this year? Do I not go for it? I've got a good job. Her job's in cyber security. She's like, I think this has sort of led me down the route. I need to go and concentrate on athletics. She was really, really good as a youngster. Really, really good. So that's the first thing to say. She went to America on a scholarship for track and field. So got her qualifications. But she was never as good at, on track and field, in track and field, as she was back home. So she quit. Pandemic came about. What did we do? I drank beer, mainly. <laughs> with you on um, on Zoom on Zoom because we couldn't be in the same room, um, but she went out and ran and she did part runs and she went and she rediscovered her love, got back in touch with her old coach, and she's a bronze medalist at the Olympic Games now. Six months ago, she had this vague idea she could be an Olympian. Four months ago, she had this vague idea she could be an Olympic finalist. Two nights ago, she had this vague idea she could be an Olympic medalist and a national record holder. So, for that 
story for everything that has happened for her uh, and for being you know a little bit on the sidelines of watching it that's my highlight okay that's number one we've got okay we're gonna have to rattle through these right mine mine is first medal first morning team gb yasmin harper scarlet mew jensen. jensen diving synchro got the medal got the interview hated the whole oh where am i going what am i supposed to be doing but we got it we got it on the radio and it was the first highlight and i was so pleased that we managed to deliver that and we picked it we knew where we needed to go yeah and diving's been good and the chinese have been brilliant yeah they've been very good good i think in terms of the medal return i think that the second nation great britain yeah. after after china so i would actually say diving's my number two okay. uh, and i would wrap up two medals in that because i'm cheating um, Tom Daly and Noah Williams, because I was I was there commentating on the radio for their silver medal in the platform synchro, and and then Lois Tolson and, and Andrea Spendolini Sirex, their bronze, because you know there's been a lot of pressure on both of them, especially Andrea, but I've known and followed Lois's career for a long time as a City of Leeds diver, and she's won medals everywhere, but she's never had that Olympic medal, and it's another beautiful bronze, isn't it? And, and that's important. Okay, so I'm going to have two as my second as well. Yeah. Rowing and canoe slalom, because they were in the same venue. Yeah, and that was, your, that was your gig. That was my first week, pretty much, apart from seeing Andy Murray and, uh, and then also some other bits of bobs. But yeah, national anthem three times at the... Go three gold medals. Hearing the God Save the King at the, at the rowing lake was immense. Getting those interviews. But then kayak cross and canoe slalom bronze and silver for Kimberly Woods and Adam Burgess. It was just so emotional. We've worked a lot with those guys and I was just so pleased for the whole team. And then for Joe Clark to come back and Kimberly to get another medal as well in the kayak cross. There were DJs playing. The rowing the rowing journalists were like, we need this, we need this canoe slalom, the atmosphere in, in the rowing, because it was incredible. So that that's my number two. Yeah, and well done to Paddle UK. I mean, they've sent a small team again and they've delivered a lot of medals in comparison, I mean, as a percentage. And I was at the canoe slalom the day Joe Clark finished fifth in, in his event and then knew that he had to regather himself and come back to win that medal that he did in, in the cross that you were covering. Um, and we've known Joe for a little while. I, I once helped him into a taxi. I don't know if that's... It didn't come up in the interview. ...public knowledge after, the, after an event once where he was celebrating that gold he won in Rio. I needed a little bit of a help home, <laughs> and I was I was I was happy to assist. So yeah, I think you know for Paddle UK and um, for those guys, Kimberly and for Joe and for Adam, I feel sorry for Mallory, um, who obviously had her moment in Tokyo with the silver medal there. I feel feel sorry for what's happened, but you know that team of four to then go in those eight events and bring the medals home, absolutely fantastic. Right. This. Come on, L number three. Number three, I'm really torn. Triathlon is a sport that you know I love. Uh, Alex Yi got to carry the flag into the closing ceremony and I saw him win that gold medal on the Pont Alexander and obviously I thought the, the team was brilliant. But number three, Kelly Hodgkinson and Kelly Holmes together. Being in that position trackside at the end of that race to be able to reunite Keely, who's just won a gold, together with Kelly that won the, the two golds, one in the 800, one in the 1500, 20 years previously. To be able to put those two together, they are friends, they have spoken, they, they message a lot, they have met, they know each other. But just to be party to that moment where we brought them together for that medal that Keely had won, that I think for many people will probably be the highlight of the British Olympics, to be just there even though I was the official photographer and <laughs> microphone holder. Number three. So my third and final one is Josh Kerr. Now, I wasn't in the stadium at the time. I think I was working at the cycling. But I was listening to Nigel Adderley, Kelly Holmes, Adam Jamili, Tessa Sanderson, and your good self on Talk Sport. And it just reminded me of being a kid in 1992 in France, listening to Barcelona Olympics on the radio. And now... I never dreamed that I would be part of an Olympic coverage and I have done it. And it, that, it, to me, is the biggest highlight that I have been 
part of an Olympic coverage, and I think TalkSport has blown this radio coverage out of the water, and I just hope that it's something that they're really proud of and that they will continue. Whether it's with us or not, I don't, I don't care, but let's get athletics back on the radio with people who are quality, understand what they're talking about, and can offer insight. Siv Coe has said that today. He said, you know, athletics needs to be on free-to-air broadcast platforms. He says the problem at the minute is that the calendar is very sporadic and split. You don't know where to go to try and watch the events that you want to watch. So one, we need a calendar that works, which culminates in a big end of year event. And that will be this new Ultimate World Championships or in the future, the World Championships or the Olympic Games. And that is absolutely right. He is right in saying that. And I hope that that happens. But it needs that, that platform that people can watch and follow. And they need to listen to our podcast because we're going to be here anything but footy. We're not en route to Paris anymore. We're going to have to come up with a new phrase. Milan. Mm. Moving. Me- meandering to me- <laughs> Milan. I need to sleep before that. Um. It's been an emotional uh, couple of weeks. We will, we will do more reflection. We may have big news coming up in the next few days as well. So stay with us. Anything but footy. The what Olympic big news? <laughs> the Oli- <laughs> what? No, I don't know. I can't, I can't possibly tell you, but we may have big news. And uh, the Olympic and Paralympic podcast anything but free make sure you tell your friends keep the olympic spirit going even in non-games time so i'm gonna say ciao you need to say the french version abianto sports social podcast network with the lucky land slots you can get lucky just about anywhere this is your captain speaking uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine but we're just gonna circle up here a while and uh, get lucky <gasps> No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. 